Well, hi everyone. Tonight is Thursday, January 28th, and tonight is a meeting of the facilitators and the subject matter experts for our Designers for Learning a massive open online course that we're hosting in canvas.net. And tonight we're going to have uh, some housekeeping items to go through as we start talking about the kickoff, which will be February 22nd. Um, and so I think a lot of folks are probably listening to the recording. Um, I had some emails that people weren't able to make it uh, live tonight. So without, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start. Can everybody see the um, window? If you could just say in the text chat whether the, you can see the presentation. Okay, great. Um, so what I wanna do, like I start every meeting by, by thanking everybody. Um, this really has been a huge collaborative group effort. I, I can't even imagine um, at this point how many hours, that we're making guesstimates of how many hours uh, people have volunteered. And, and last, at last check, we were at like a thousand hours of, um, of people volunteering their time. So I, I just, you know, like I say, say every time we start a meeting, thank you. I don't know why this works, but but it does. Um, and I wanted to kick off by um, getting us all pretty excited about current enrollment. As of about 10 minutes before we started tonight, I went and checked in Canvas. And uh, just shy of 500 people are currently enrolled. And we have another three and a half weeks to go. So we're about halfway through the enrollment period. I think it's going to taper off in terms of um, the, the numbers enrolling per day. We kind of got the low-hanging fruit with our um, 488 here. These are people, a lot of them, who knew about us already. And so now the people we'll be reaching are those that don't know us as well or um, maybe we'll be finding in little hidden corners of the Internet. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just wanted to hopefully share this as a, a little bit of motivation that, you know, these are, our, these are now our participants. So we have, you know, faces and names that we can start um, attaching to the people that will be participating with us. <clears throat> and you'll be able to see them once we get um, everybody in this group enrolled on Canvas, you'll be able to see the, their, their names. And we'll get into that in a little bit more as far as where we stand with Canvas. Um, so for tonight, um, I, I would think I can keep it pretty much to about a half hour, 20 minutes or so. I don't have a ton of material, but it's kind of some important housekeeping things. And I certainly then want to open it up to the group to be able to ask any questions. Um, so we'll go through the important dates coming up, make sure we're all <clears throat> clear on who the facilitators and the SMEs are, do a little bit of a roll call. And then, as we did last week, um, it kind of put the smiley face there. It makes me laugh thinking I'm, I'm assigning uh, folks of your caliber um, homework, but there are things that we do all need to be on the same page, and that includes some of the items that are listed here. And then uh, we'll conclude with some more ideas that the group may have in terms of how we can expand our reach in terms of promoting the MOOC to make sure we are reaching those that, that I may not have contemplated or, or may not have caught, the, caught wind of, of, of this project happening. So as I mentioned last time, um, I, I tend to be a talking head in these, and um, it always makes me a little uncomfortable. So please, through the text chat or just you know chiming in through through your voice, do do break in with any comments or questions as I'm going through my housekeeping items, and then certainly at the end we'll have um, plenty of time where um, anything I didn't cover or wasn't clear we can go through. So in terms of important dates, uh, February 1st, Monday is kind of a biggie. We have our final review with Canvas, and that's after we get that readiness review um, under our belts, I'll turn on, um, or I'll not turn on, but I will rather invite everyone, the facilitators and the subject matter experts into Canvas. But we've kind of had it in lockdown right now just because we don't want to have a lot of hands in there as we do our final tweaking and getting things ready. But it, it's, I would say, 95% of the way done in terms of the content being included. Um, and then the other item um, I want, that's big on February 1st, I know some of the folks that are involved in the project are interested in doing ACT proposals. However, that deadline is very, very rapidly approaching on Monday. Um, so I think Camille, maybe, and, and Kay, um, we're going to work on something. I'm not sure where that stands. Um, let me unmute. Um, but, uh, Camille, did you have a second to, or, or the ability actually to, to chime in? Is that something you still want to work on, the AACT proposal? Um, yeah, I'm going to still work on it. Uh, let me just give you a history with me. I'm, I'm a late person with proposals. Okay. <laughs> I like tend to turn them in very rapidly at the last moment. Okay, perfect. But the challenge is right now, because I'm an officer, I've been doing panel proposals for the last two weeks. Okay, sounds good. So I have like 10 proposals done, but I, I'm going to get wrong to my personal ones, maybe the latter part of um, the first. Okay. But, 
This that's one I can get done um, maybe Friday night, Saturday morning, and I'll send it over to Key. Okay, that's great. I appreciate that. That's great. Because we, um, we've got another one with um, Jessica's turning one in, and I think John is going to have one on his. He's doing some research on persona. So that's great. Just so we have some representation. Um, is it a panel, though? I was wondering if you had any information. Is it a panel or is it a proposal? Yeah, I like the panel idea, don't you? Yeah, I do. It's much easier. I think so, too. And it, it really is more to speaks to what we're doing as far as having a a mixed group of subject matter experts, designers, and facilitators, I think it'd be a great opportunity to have a, you know, a dialogue on how that collaboration went. So okay, that well was, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so moving back to the, um, the, the course, um, if I could get two dates on the, on the calendar, I know we, we tend to like Thursday meetings, unfortunately, that uh, two weeks from tonight, I'm not able to um, uh, to join in. I have uh, another commitment. So if possible, if we could um, tentatively put, not tentatively, actually, if you could write this in your calendars, um, I will be here. Whoever else can join me Monday, February 8th at 7 p.m. Central, and then another session before the MOOC starts on Thursday, February 18th. Um, if we could get those in there as dates where we would meet as a group and just, again, run through housekeeping and, and make sure we're all on the same page before our official kickoff on the 22nd, that would be great. And then we don't need to talk about it tonight um, necessarily, but we do need to think about um, uh, what we want to do in terms of having live sessions and get some dates on the calendar for once the MOOC begins. But we'll table that until um, until one of our later meetings, but just kind of keep that in the back of your mind, how you, what dates might work for you, what days of the week work. I, I know a lot of folks are teachers and, and work either um, you know, late into the evening or maybe even have some um, evening classes that they teach, but um, let's, let's keep that on um, on our agenda as well for going forward. Um, there's AACT, I mentioned that. These are the ones that are in the pipeline. Um, so here's our kind of facilitator roll call. At this point, um, we've got nine facilitators plus myself, so I guess that would be 10. Um, and then in terms of the SMEs, we've got the uh, five original ones. Um, unfortunately, one of our SMEs had to back out. She has a, another um, life life happened and she had to to, to step back. Um, so Lisey Weiss, is, is it Weiss, Lisey? Am I saying it correctly, Weiss? You are. Why? Okay. Like Why? Smart. Like smart. Oh, oh, smart, <laughs> wise, okay, excellent. Um, and so we were um, able to add a new addition to the team, um, a friend, uh, a colleague of Amanda's from prior projects. And so we're really excited to have her along as well as a, a subject matter expert. So let's see, what, where are we at? So 10 plus six, so we're at 16 of us that will be um, keeping the, 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 the boat afloat once the MOOC starts. So I, I think we're pretty well covered in terms of that. Um, so thank you everybody for, for hanging in there and, and this is our confirmed team at this point. So in terms of homework, I mentioned when I uh, started talking about the agenda, uh, the entire uh, lesson that the students and the, the participants in the MOOC will be working on is geared to the college and career readiness standards. And so in, in the next couple weeks, if you could do a pretty deep dive into these standards, I would really appreciate it. Um, oops, I just moved it ahead there. Um, so the, the PDF that I put in the chat room, the, it should link you directly to this. It's um, a publication that's on the links.ed.gov website. Um, and I, I would assume a lot of folks are familiar with the College and Career Readiness Standards. They're the adult ed standards that dovetail with the co um, Common Core Standards. And it, again, it's going to be the foundation for our projects. And uh, everything that the students work on will begin with them picking one of the standards that they want to work on that will then be their, their subject and as well as their um, objective for their lesson. So if you could spend some time doing it, it's, it's a really horrible, <laughs> unfortunately horrible publication in terms of content. It's not something you necessarily sit down and you know read with a glass of wine. Um, it's, it's more of um, just getting your head around how things are laid out and uh, what the grade level scheme is, what how the subject matter is, is laid out between English language arts and math. Um, so long story short, if you could uh, please spend some time, some quality time with this, I think it will really help us to help the participants once they start working on their projects. 
So and, and I put this in the MOOC. This is a little diagram that I laid out for the MOOC participants, and I think it also helps me explain to you why the college and career readiness standards are so important. Um, as I mentioned, this will really drive what the subject is that the student, um, the MOOC participant decides to work on, as well as the, the grade level at which they want to gear their lesson, what um, domain or strand, depending on if it's math or English language arts, and then drilling down to the specific standard that they want to frame their lesson around. And so as you're going through the College and Career Readiness Standards Report, if you could kind of think of it in terms of this decision tree that I've laid out here, so the MOOC participant will make a, a quick decision, okay, I want to work on a math lesson, or conversely, I want to work on English language arts, what grade level that I, what, what am I comfortable with, and then from there on working to the right, that's how they'll, their first decisions as far as working on their lessons. And so the more I think our group is pretty solid in terms of how the college and career readiness standards are laid out, um, that will help them as they, um, as they inevitably come up with questions. Because as I mentioned, it's a pretty painful document, unfortunately, um, to go through. It's just, it's very detailed, but with good reason. Um, and then the other item I'd like you to spend some time going through, right, it's, it's pretty much in its final form, but we have prepared a design guide for the way that we'd like the lessons to lay out. Um, it has, it's a three-part design guide. The first part is very descriptive going through basically um, identifying who your audience is and what standard you're aligning to and so, so forth. Then the second part is the actual lesson material, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. And that's where the, the, they're actually developing their lesson materials that the instructor will go through with the um, adult um, student that's, that's going to be participating in the lesson. Then part three of the, the, um, the design guide is where they'll then reference their materials. So if they have any supplementary resources they want to include or if there's any reference material, that will be in part three. So if you click on that, PDF, that link on the bottom there, it'll take you to a Google Doc. And, and like I said, it's pretty much in its final form. Um, but uh, there, there may be some tweaks between now and, and kickoff, but it pretty much looks like it will look like in the final form. So let's just, just go through this in a little bit more detail. So when you open up the design guide, you'll see um, one of the first pages is the project requirements. If you could just familiarize yourself with this, because it, it does lay out what some of the, the lesson uh, requirements are that we're, we're, we're asking people to um, conform to as they're designing their, their lesson. For example, we'd like them to keep it as a fairly short bite lesson, meaning about 15 to 30 minutes of instructional time. Um, that it's again has to align with the college and career readiness standards that it has to be a, a topic in English language arts or math um, and then in terms of some of the more you know, devil in the details as far as the development the materials do have to be accessible and usable by our, our um, our learners, and, and where this creeps in is a lot of times in our projects, uh, people will want to use some type of development tool or platform that will be behind a paywall, um, and that we just can't have that, or that there has to be some type of additional login for people to get in. Um, we, we just want to avoid any type of development tool use that does that. Um, and then everything that they develop, we have to somehow have it stored on the internet so we can link to it or embed it within the, um, within the lesson. So. Again, a lot of details in this report, but if you go through and read it, I'd really appreciate it. Um, so you kind of know what I'm talking about when, when I talk about some of these um, design requirements. And then this is the um, t table of contents for the lesson. As I mentioned before, there it's kind of hard to read on the slide, but hopefully if you, uh, once you're into the design guide itself, you'll see the table contents on the first page. But, but there are three parts to the, um, as I mentioned, to the design guide template, the first being the lesson description, then the lesson, and then the supplementary resources. And so the idea being this, the students will develop their prototype using Google Docs, using this as the template. I'm sorry, I think I said prototype. They'll develop their design proposal, rather, um, in, in Google Docs. Once they've completed that, they'll import that into Open Author as their prototype. It'll go through a round of formative evaluation. They'll tweak things within Open Author, and then that will be then their final deliverable when they're done. So, um, and then I think that's all I had on the design guide. And I think I'll just pause for a second just to see if anybody has any. Does anybody have any questions? I have I'm unmuting, so I know it's going to be a little weird audio here, but did anybody have any questions as far as the, how the design guide's laid out or questions about the college and career readiness standards? 
Lisi, I'm pretty. I'm assuming you're you're familiar with the College and Career Readiness Standards, right? I am. Yes, and <clears throat> I'm sorry. I haven't had myself muted, so you probably hear me clearing my throat. Yes, I am, and uh, I wonder if though you could share that link again, and uh, also a link to the to the design guide. Sure, absolutely. Let me put them in the text chat. So here, the first one okay. is the uh, College and Career Readiness Standards. And let me uh, click on the link here for, okay, this is hard to get to for me. Um, you know what, let me give me, give me a second to get you the link to the, every time I click on it, I'm getting, okay. uh, I get this silly thing popping up here. Yeah, let me put that in more, more toward the end. I'll give you a copy of the, I don't think I have immediately at my fingertips a copy of the design guide. Let me see one second. One second. Yeah, give me a second on that and I'll okay, put the design guide in. Okay, well, I'm going to mute everybody again and keep plugging away here. Okay. Then um, I think another pinch point for the learners, it, it historically has been a problem, <laughs> is especially for novice designers and instructors who've um, never developed a lesson is this whole idea of what did the, what are the activities are what what do we create for the learners to do as part of the learning experience their practice their presentation their assessments and so um, in the past this has been a good jumping off point for us and we're using it again uh, we, we like to frame things around Merrill's first principles of instruction and so this is um, I'll like see if I can click on this to get you a copy of the link Okay. Okay, I'm putting this in the chat room as well. So um, I think this is going back, dating back to like 2002. Um, David Merrill did a review of all the isms. So the <laughs> behaviorism, the constructivism, and cognitivism, and all the different the learning and instructional theories, and tried to come up with the shared principles among the different learning and instructional theories. And so came up with these five kind of foundational things that really – if you do these five things, kind of like the 80-20 rule of instruction, if you kind of do these 20% uh, of the things, you're probably you know, getting getting the most bang for your buck. And um, so that's where we start our discussion with our MOOC participants in terms of how to think about developing and designing the instructional strategies and instructional activities for your lesson. So if you could do me a favor and familiarize yourself with this paper, I would really appreciate it. And just to give, just you, to a, give you a heads up as far as, um, hang on one second, how, um, how it lays out. It's basically framing every, uh, all your lesson around a problem or a task, and then there are certain activation activities, demonstration, application, and integration that should happen within the lesson to uh, maximize the effect, um, effectiveness and also the efficiency and the appeal of the lesson. And again, if you read through Merrill's article. He does a really nice job, I think, within the article of talking about these and how they relate to specific learning theories. And so this is what we're going to ask our MOOC participants to get their head around to try to understand how the, uh, the, the lesson itself should be developed. And in tandem with that, we're also working with the WAPIA lesson framework. And I'm not sure, Lisi, maybe you're familiar with this. Um, it's, it's more of a... More of a comes out of the uh, adult ed world. Um, I certainly had not come across it before, but if you notice the, the pieces of the framework, it very much aligns with what I just mentioned as far as Merrill's first principles. The idea that every lesson should start with some type of warm up or, in, or in, then followed by an introduction um, talks about the, the, t the ways you can lay out your presentation or demonstration or modeling, whatever it is that you, the subject of the lesson is. That there has to be some degree of practice opportunity, guided practice, followed by assessments, and then this application piece is much like the integration piece that Merrill speaks of. So in, within the course, we are, again, framing this idea of lesson development around Merrill's first principles, as well as this WAPIA lesson framework. So what I'd really, really, really appreciate everybody to do, let me uh, move to here, is if you have... Um, on your own, if you have other, th you're in, um, all of your instruction, instructional designers or educators um, by profession and training as well, if you have other ways to help people think about this, I'd really appreciate it. For example, I know, Camille, you said you have, I think, that playing cards or they're like, a, it's like instructional activity cards or something like that. It, could you speak to that for a second, Camille? 
are the learning battle cards. Yes, yes. So can you explain what those are all about? Okay, so that's new. That's like brand new. Mm-hmm. Um, they are actually cards that, just now, they're actually cards that have all of the strategies and um, they basically go through instructional design. It's like a, uh, you, you guide the user or the customer to some activities like, what would you like your product to look like? What would you like them to do? Mm-hmm. And you actually give them ideas with these cards. I, um, I have a couple of documents. I could probably, because they're brand new, it's hard to really explain them. Okay. So yeah. What's on them. So you have to see what's on them. Okay. Because they have activities and then they have actions and then verbs you can use and stuff like that. So I can put that in, in the form if you would like. Can yeah, that, that would be great. Yeah, I'd really appreciate that. Um, and then um, certainly I'm sure most of us have certain things in our bags, our bag of tricks as far as um, application activities we like to do or that may be applicable for different um, subject matters or audiences or whatever it may be. And so the more we think about that in advance of the class, start, the MOOC starting, I think the better. As I mentioned, this just tends to be the pinch point with a a, a group of novice designers that we're going to have is everybody defaults to let's just present a whole bunch of content and then let's quiz them and let's present more content and quiz them. And our idea here is to get them outside of that shovelware bubble to think about other ways to, um, and and more effective ways to take a a learner through the the lesson activities. Oh, thanks Camille. So Camille put those uh, battle cards in. Does anybody else have any of uh, like a favorite way? I'm sure a lot of you have taught instructional design classes and lesson planning. Are there other tricks of the trade or tools that you like to to use to help people as they're trying to th- think through and strategize ways to come up with um, instructional activities? <coughs> uh, Jennifer, uh, I was wondering because these are not. This is Kea. Um, yeah. Novice designers, and this little wind tunnel noise, right? Yeah, let me let me try to mute there. Is that is that a little better now? Now give it a try. So I was thinking um, because uh, Camille just mentioned those cards, I was wondering if we can give them some framework type things to work with simplified frameworks like we I use we use gamification and we have adaptive we have a bunch of kind of frameworks but they don't need to go there Uh, as a as a framework in terms of because in a short in a book in a short plus a shorter kind of a course frame um, to have them think through what would be the best way of assimilating all of this and coming up with uh, screen designs or whatever uh, the way they want to present this information is that an is that something that we can think about? Is like yeah, and, and when we you know, and I think once you read through the Wapia, that kind of is what you're talking about. Um, okay. So if you look at the discussion or the design guide, and I like, again, I'll try to get that open here. Um, it, we're we're asking them to. I wish I could blow this up, but it's not. And well, let me see. Let me try to open it here. Okay, so this is the, let me put this put in the chat box, right? So I can open it up there. There, no. does that, is, is it in the chat room? Do you see it right now? It's the, I see Meryl, I see battle cards. And then just at the very bottom. At the very bottom, let's see, yeah, the teal guide, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is the um, the framework I was mentioning, that WAPIA framework, and it's pretty straightforward. There's not it's not enough it's nothing earth shattering but it's basically saying uh, start out with a warm-up activity uh, progress to an introduction of, uh, to the topic um, thinking through ways to, to present the new material the new concepts the new skill whatever it may be through modeling or demonstration um, coming up with practice activities um, figuring out your assessment strategies to assess the uh, the mastery of the objectives that you've set um, and finally, then application, which kind of is forward looking, thinking of how they're going to actually apply the content that in the subject matter that you're teaching them um, mm-hmm. going forward. So is that kind of what you were thinking of in terms mm-hmm. of that's kind of the general framework we'd like yeah, to follow? I just think it's helpful even uh, when I, you know, is before the, because 
in the entire in, in the MSID program that I teach, I mean, we have tons of time to do all of this, but in a shorter time frame, if we can take like you've done, I think Merrill's principles are excellent choice actually, because it's very, very neat and tidy and not having a, a lot of, you know, room for mm -hmm. too much, you know, thinking outside the box. So if we take that and since these are pretty lined and say, let's just keep to this format for now, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's kind of a nice little format that you just when I when you when we see this and then I think that might force them to not to think outside the box in terms of content quiz content quiz which is a typical if there are if these if this novice instructional designers are teachers uh, background they're most likely thinking that way. You know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and then, uh, to, you know, to get to your point, you know, hopefully we do get some people who have a little bit more experience, but if they do want to take yeah. this framework as the kind of the ground, <laughs> the ground floor, and then if they want to build uh, right. uh, on top of that and maybe include it, maybe as part of their practice yeah. activities, make it a game right. or, or whatever it may be. Or adaptive or whatever, <laughs> narrative, storytelling, whatever. But those are things we're not introducing them in this course. So uh, unless they really know about it early on, it, it might be hard, but those who know can definitely say, hey, I know about this way and a, a new and different way of doing this. So let's go with it. But those who don't and are grab, um, grappling, is that the new word? Um, then, uh, then they have a very short, rigid framework to, to work with um, to get this going. Yes. Can, I, I, can, I, can I just get in there? Yeah, uh, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea, but I don't want to discourage those who know more. Mm -hmm. Because that typically happens in a MOOC yeah. where you have people who are just coming in for a refresher or to see what you're doing. And, you know, to gain ideas. So can we have a discussion board or forum or some area where people with more experience can either contribute differently or maybe just say, well, I had this idea and post it there and then leave it open to those who are new also if they would like to go there. Yeah. I think that's an optional forum for interaction. Yeah, so we keep Absolutely. those people engaged. Absolutely. And I do hope that does happen. So, for example, when we get to this, the section where we introduce the Merrill's First Principles we, um, and then the WAPIA framework, we have a, just exactly to your point, we have a very specific discussion saying, tell us what your ideas are for your lesson. And that would be the opportunity for both novice as well as experienced people to say, well, here's my thoughts before we, you know, before we necessarily slot them into you know, rigidly saying you have to follow, you know, have, have your lesson flow in this way. And, and my hope is, and exactly what you're saying is those that with, with experience will share their ideas that will be outside the box, something yeah. that will be on what we're here, what we have here. And then to, to Kia's point, exactly if, there are those that are <laughs> completely stumped. I don't know what yeah, to do. Yeah. They can rely on going back to the kind of these nuts and bolts. Uh, yeah, that could be a, a, a beginning place for them. So they don't just in frustration, don't leave the course, you know, mm -hmm. like this is way over my head. So, uh, but if it's something simple, this is a place to begin. And as we move on and you get introduced to interesting ideas, like, games gamification or whatever storytelling format whatever format you know mm -hmm. and you want to experiment with that you definitely we encourage that yeah. but we don't want to frustrate you so here is a you know with all else fails come back to this format you know right right so. you know i don't know colleen if you have your um do you have your uh, audio but maybe i wonder if you could speak to this because i know this uh, you watch this happen a little bit in the prior co cohort as far as people getting kind of stuck at this Stage. We just tend to get people stuck here, <laughs> and I just think it's because it's a kind of hard for for the novices to to kind of get this idea that we're not just dumping a lot of content and then quizzing people. But I don't know if you have your mic or ability to talk about this or things that maybe you think might be helpful. I don't know if you can. Were you talking to me? Did you say Colleen? I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought she was talking to me. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, well, with the course, we had a lot of uh, content, and it was difficult to get people to think outside of the content and then quiz, kind of like we're talking about. We tried to give them uh, just basic quizzes up front without giving them, uh, kind of like activity and then lesson. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how we structured it, so maybe that's something we could push as well mm -hmm. or, or kind of find an example of. 
Yeah. Because it, it is hard to get out of that mindset. I mean, yeah. I, I think we all struggle with it. It's just hard. It's, you have to be creative. <laughs> I, don't know. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like the, to me, I always say it's the art of what we do versus the science of it. You know, can you create interesting stories that people get engaged with and they need interesting activities? So I guess my, you know, kind of belaboring the point here, but I think it is an important point. The more we kind of think about this, that the fact that we're going to have some novice designers, designers have some, yes. um, some experienced folks, and the more we can kind of help them bring these creative ideas to into their lessons. I, you know, the more we kind of think of that in advance, I think it'll help us as, as we get things um, moving forward. Jennifer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if this is appropriate here, but uh, I do a lot of teacher training and I'm so amazed that so many people still don't uh, work with rubrics mm -hmm. and uh, rubrics are such a wonderful way to provide students with a control over their own learning and assessment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering if maybe we could encourage people to, uh, or, and to provide them with some really good rubric uh, instructions so that if they choose to do that, and I always encourage it, uh, that they can implement that in their lesson plans. So um, where would that be? So you're saying, where, where would that come into play as far as their lesson? Could you kind of walk us through that a little bit? I would just uh, provide it. I, I assume that there are some resources that you provide them um, as, uh, as optional. Mm -hmm. They could go over there and learn how to do rubrics. Yeah, you know what, we didn't, we don't, you know, there were a lot of things we had to cut and that was actually, what well, that didn't, didn't make the list. I'm trying oh, to think okay. how we okay. can, but that, but that doesn't mean we can't um, think of a way to do it. Um, you know, maybe if you and I could have a sidebar, if you could send me via email some examples and maybe we'll try to think sure. of a way where we can insert that. Okay. Because um, we certainly do have a month to still play around here a little bit with, with content, but, um, and there, there may be a place where we can, we can slot that in. Wonderful. Okay, thank you for that suggestion. That's great. Um, and then Camille's asking, do we have examples in the course? Um, examples of what? And let me, maybe we do and maybe we don't. <laughs> examples of what, Camille? Sorry. Um, examples of activities that you would like them to create. So ah. whatever we're doing or we're asking them to do, do we have examples do we have like modeling of what we would expect them to, to achieve? I got it. Yes. It, it, to some degree. And, you know, again, we're kind of, <laughs> we all, we had to make some you know, editorial decisions on how much we expanded things, but on the section where we present the WAPIA framework, as well as the Merrill's first principles, we give examples of, for example, debates or um, I'm trying to come up with some things, role playing or things like that, that would, you know, fits in, and, and, tied to Merrill's first principles. So for example, in the activation phase, here are six to eight different things you could consider. I mean, it's not huge, but it's, um, a, it's some. Okay. All right. Um, do you, do you have an, and I guess I struggle with this all the time and I keep saying to all my friends, we need to write a book on this, but do you have any sources that you use or, and this is not just you Camille, but anybody that's on this call, that does give ex good examples. And that's why I kind of called on you with your battle cards. I was thinking it was kind of geared toward this. For example, if you need a good way to demonstrate or model, here are six or seven examples of how that could, could work. Is Let that me look, I, I can look and see if I can find some resources. Well, typically I normally walk my students through this process. Mm -hmm. I normally do a synchronous session with them mm -hmm. and ask them for an idea. And then we do it as a whole class. We walk it through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I normally do. So give people an idea. And it's kind of memorable when you walk it through with them because the ideas came from them. Yeah. Um, because each person looks at it differently when you create or model something. I mean, it, when it when it's presented to you, it, it it gives a different message and interpretation. Yep, yep, I'm with you. And That's so, I, exactly, I'm with Camille on that. I actually, um, 
walk them through it. Um, mine is also an online, so we do this on our synchronous nights and kind of explain it to them, ask them. I do desk crits kind of work with them, so you know uh, they can bounce it off each other, and then there are there is some product that may not be a big publishable product, but something they can necessarily work with uh, in the duration of what it is linked to their major project. So, but, you know, I'm definitely something we can look up and or create maybe as needed uh, for the book, Jennifer. <laughs> for the book we're going to write, right? Exactly. Well, you know what? I, I, I love this idea so much. That here, how, how, do you, how does this sound for you? So as I said, there is the discussion board where we're going to ask them, and in, in, it's in module three, so pretty early in the course, to come up with their, off the top of their head, like, you know, what are your, what's your gut of idea of how you'll take, take the student through this WAPIA framework? Right. Um, and then what if we then it had a synchronous session where we pulled out, let's say, three or four, as, and then as the facilitators, we have a synchronous session where we brainstorm on, okay, cool, here's your subject, you know, here's the grade level you're working with, you know, you're, you're saying you want to start doing a role play or whatever it may be, and then we brainstorm on the synchronous session. And I think that, is that kind of what you're saying you do in your classes, that you, yeah. you grab something and then it, kind of brainstorm as a group on how that could possibly That's work? Cool. I love it. I love that idea. So let's let's definitely do that as on one of our synchronous sessions that we have. Sounds good, yeah. Because it's like you said, you know, the, the, and we've talked. The, the, there's the art to this, and so the more you kind of codify it <laughs> and put it into a box, the less it becomes an art, and more it becomes this, you know, canned formula, which we know is not really how instructional design works. So um, yeah. it's 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 kind of a fine line to try to give them a framework to use as. A, to get them on a path, but at the same time, you you hope and you're going to encourage them to to take it to a, a more creative level than than you're telling them at the get go. Okay, excellent. Um, let's move along. Oops, now I'm kind of I thought we thought we'd wind down in half an hour, but this is a great conversation. Um, I think I'm pretty much done with what I had, except I did want to give you guys a heads up on Canvas access. Um, I will be inviting everybody starting on Monday, and I just beg everybody, please don't edit the content in Canvas, uh, even though I can go back and try to figure out, but, it, but it's just try not to touch, try not to t amend the, the pages if possible, because um, I just, it makes me my kind of a freak out when I think about it, because <laughs> uh, I, I would hate to have to kind of go back and try to figure things out. But that said, I am very much looking for feedback, and so from a quality control standpoint, I hope everybody will contribute their eyes and ears to if they see some spelling errors or something like Scoofy or is the stuff we're talking about tonight where this example is not sufficient or this is overkill or whatever it may be. Um, and so what, what we did with the design team, we had an online survey where um, the designers reviewed their own section as well as one other designer and that worked pretty well and then when you fill out the survey it just gives you some quick little boxes to check off that yeah this looks good or tell us where some things need to be revisited I would really much 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 beg you please to do it that way versus then uh, going in and editing the content yourself um, and then in terms of what's we're kind of re reiterating some of the things we talked about already, the facilitation ideas. Um, how are we going to go about um, facilitating things when people do start posting their questions in the help forum or in our Ask the Subject Matter Expert forum or the different facilitate, um, I'm sorry, discussion boards we have for each of the modules? I think once you get into Canvas and you get a better sense for the flow of the course, um, in our next conversations that we have as a group, you guys will be able to work with me and, and the others in our group and thinking through how we're going to be able to, um, to facilitate and, and support the folks once they get working on their projects. Um, and that's pretty much all I had. Um, any more help that we can get promoting the MOOC, uh, the better. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, we, we, we've got, done all the work, hard work so far getting the course up and running. We may as well you know, welcome as many people as we can get. And again, here's the link. I'll put this in the chat room. This is the frequently asked question page. It, it, it's a lot, a lot of material, but it's tended to be helpful when people ask me a specific question about the MOOC. I just point them to this page and it gives them a sense for, for what we're, we're trying to do here. So that's really all I had. Does anybody else have any thoughts or things you want to talk about before we wind down for the evening? I'm good, Jennifer. I, I, when I look at the course, then I'll, I might have questions. But. Yeah, 
I would imagine. Because <laughs> it's, uh, it, I, I hope we did a good job. You know, you never know until you start getting a second set of eyes on it. To me, it's, I'm, I'm too invested right now to have a, an objective opinion when I look at it. Um, and let me also, um, for me, see what, or Lisi rather, let me. I just wondered if you could send us some samples of the announcements you're sending out. Um, yep, I can. You know what, I can find it. Right. Let me find you one right now, actually. And I'm also pulling up the, um, let me open up the design guide really fast for you. Okay. Final assets. And here, yeah, here's the design guide. Okay. I just put in the chat room the design guide that you were asking about. I think that should be it. Does that... Oops, oh, that's not it. That's not it. Sorry about that. That is not it. There you go. Okay. And then let me go to our website. I've been trying to go back and make our um, make sure our website is up to date with the big announcements we send out. Okay. And this is, a, again, a lot of content in what I just put in right there. Um, and so what people have been doing, like, for example, Amanda sent me, a, she CC'd me on something she sent out to some of her colleagues. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she changed some of the wording, not so much instructional design, but more adult to focus to the adult educators. So she changed some of the language um, to be more appropriate and appealing to the group she was sending it to. Perfect. Okay. Well, very good. Well, thanks so much. And then um, if you guys could just send me your, whatever you're going to work on for the AACT proposal over the weekend, that would be great. And I will send out an invitation starting on Monday. Okay. Thanks everybody. And we'll see you on the 8th or those that can join us on February 8th. February 8th, right? I missed because I came in. Sorry. I was a few minutes. Oh, sure. Yeah. Let me go back to that first page. Hang on a second. February 8th. There were two dates that I wanted to try to get. Um, in meetings and before we start the MOOC. Uh, one is the uh, Monday, Feb it's a Monday, by the way, Monday, February 8th, and then Thursday, February 18th. Two days, right? So February 8th, at, uh, my, I mean, uh, same time. So it's for me, it's 8 p.m. EST. 8, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 7, 7 p.m. Central, exactly. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate your time tonight, and I appreciate everything you do. I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Have a great Bye. night. Thank you.